is becoming airborne shortly. height are vital in safe flying. Now watch this high wing, conventional looking aeroplane. They'll eventually be climbing to height. There may well be some strange manoeuvres before they leave ground level. Okay. Going to show off for a minute, I've actually flown this very glider and it is extraordinarily manoeuvrable. I flew it a few years ago. The Fox Glider, like all modern sailplanes, entirely composite structure, remarkably strong, almost unbelievably strong. I helped to build a glider once and that was stretched to 11G. Now we, you and I are going to black out because I'm a bit older than perhaps many of you. I'm going to black out about 4 or 5G. But 11G is enough even for youngsters. It's a little bit like towing a car with a very long tow rope. And perhaps with your wife driving the vehicle being towed and hasn't actually got a clue as to what you're trying to achieve in the front car. <laughs> Now that's even harder to do continuous slow rolls. Gliders suffer from a thing called adverse yaw. Even though this is an aerobatic glider, it involves a lot of well-coordinated use of the rudder in order to stop the aeroplane wandering off in yaw, yaw being left or right. Brilliant bit of flying. I used to fly it for Duncan's and Liberty. Oh. You know, a beautiful stall turn. Again, quite difficult with a high winged aeroplane. With a low-wing aeroplane, you can actually look along the wing from where you're sitting and make sure you carry out a good stall turn. As you can see, this one is fly inverted, a full inverted fuel system. And look, it can even put. Now that's what got us all last year. You don't see high-wing aeroplanes doing bunt manoeuvres. That means uh, an inverted loop. Very stressful on both the aeroplane and the pilot. mentioned blackout. Of course if you do a lot of negative G manoeuvres like that inverted loop, you end up by suffering from red out where too much blood goes to the brain and your eyes get blocked off there. Beautiful hesitation roll there in four sections. That involves tremendous coordination between ailerons and rudder and you will actually see the ailerons moving on the wing when the, when the sun is in the right place. movement. You're not just sitting there with your fingertips on a control column moving it an inch or two, you'll be moving it right across the cockpit and fairly quickly. There you go. 
I lost where he went. <laughs> I suppose this is a form of a high speed run. We're going to be seeing much higher speed runs later in the day. Oh, now that is beautiful. That's called a knife edge, and you can only do that by canting the fuselage upwards to generate the best of the wind because they're on their side. Now that is beautifully done, it involves a lot of rudder. To control pitch when you're right over at 90 degrees like that, you need to use the rudder. Funny feeling. Very satisfying when you do it right. Justin only started flying relatively late in life. He's not that old, but he's not been flying that many years, but he learned very, very quickly indeed. again as he gains a little height before rolling upright. Just a very quick one. My name's James Cliff. I work for the Blades display team. Now, the Blades pilots are here at Shoreham today, which is really cool because last year, obviously, we had a little bit of a nightmare with the weather, but the Blades pilots are here this morning. Now, we're at the RF Association Wings Pill Stand, which is behind the commentary point, and the guys are going to be there for about 45 minutes to an hour this morning, and we're there to meet and greet you. So come along and say hello. Pick up some signposts. There's lots of other stuff there. We've got the new Blades shop as well. So come along. Say hello to myself and the team down there and we'll sign some autographs for you and take some pictures with you. So come along, say hello, and we'll see you shortly. Okay, guys, look ahead, and you see the box glider has pulled off tow, and he's doing his best. consider the undisputed world leader in glider aerobatics. We'll be seeing Guy later on today. down the runway now. Justin coming into land in the um, decathlon on the grass for, to our right, side slipping to lose height. But coming back tracking down the runway is the Catalina, sometimes called the Canso, consolidated aircraft based in San Diego. 
brought these out in the mid 1930s for a number of reasons. First of all, it's a regular at Shoreham, lives up at Duxford, but also because this year is the 70th anniversary of the formation of the Search and Rescue Department of the Royal Air Force as it was then. So in 1941, Search and Rescue was started and the Catalina had a large part to play in wartime search and rescue. And it is search and rescue. So first of all, you've got to find the person that's in the water or persons. And then you've either got to direct somebody to rescue them or even, of course, in the case of an aeroplane like the Catalina, land on the water and pick them up. Put them on board and off you go again. There was an important air sea rescue squadron based at Shoreham as we watched the Catalina depart. <laughs>